Hello, welcome once again. Uh, today we're going to be dealing with um, many accessories. This is from the Haynes Manual, and I'm using this right now instead of the other schematics because <clears throat> these schematics are a little easier to understand, especially for beginners. <clears throat> As we go along, you'll understand what I'm referring by. This is the headlamps over here, and as you see, when it comes to the headlamps circuits over here, <clears throat> I outlined the yellow part of it. You always look for the most important components. They should stand out to you. That's how you start with a schematic. You don't worry about these lines. You don't worry about the grounds. You don't worry about the, the, um, the fuses, the main components. Outlined over here is the body control module I outlined. That's a main component. Memory, heated seat position, switch, main component. Driver door module, main component. And over here, of course, body control module, always a main component, a computer. That is the ones that you uh, concentrate on. Now, <clears throat> we have something called uh, um, LEDs. LEDs is light emitting diodes where you press a button, and you've seen this all over in your car, you press a button, the light comes on, indicating that you have pressed the button that you're requesting something for air conditioning or rear, rear air conditioning. Um, <clears throat> in this case, where you see over here traction Control over here. You have transfer case. This is a SUV, a trailblazer. So, something you want two wheel drive, something you want uh, um, four wheel drive, high and low. This means this is the symbol meaning that it will emit light from this component and it will turn green if it's good. Sometimes you have an LED which is red when it's bad. So, anyway, this is. This is what we're dealing with. We're turning the headlamps on. As you saw in the previous one, we have something called the body control module in charge. He turns on the lights. It's not like the olden days. You just turn on the switch and the bulbs and it goes on. No. Body control module controls the relays that go to the headlamps. So what you have here is a body control module here. As you can see, we have the LEDs. Indicating the headlamp is on right here and the headlamp switch assembly over here. The dotted line means all this is in a switch. We have this over here, the other part of the body control module. Now, with this type of diagram, you don't have the pin numbers. That makes it a little difficult. So if you go to the other ones, Mitchell, that I use, you have the pin numbers. With this one, you don't. You have to look it back up to, for reference. So I'm just trying to get you familiar with different types of problems that occur with, with different schematics. We turn on the, the headlamp switch over here, or we, we uh, adjust it. What are we doing when we're doing that? Remember, this is a Trailblazer SUV, okay? 2016, I believe. And now... When we adjust this, this is called a potentiometer. We're adjusting this middle wiper over here to go back. If you look at it, it goes into an input into body control module, which goes into here. We have a 5-volt reference. 5 volts goes to this side of this switch. The other side goes to a ground. This is the main one. When you adjust this, you're adjusting this wiper, the switch the control, to tell him what you want. Based upon that, guess what? Headlamp on. This is the output. Follow the output. Follow the output. He's going to indicate that the headlamps are on. That's what you want. And he's going to give a command to the body control module, which is going to do turn on the proper lights, which we did yesterday in a video. So that's how it works. Like I said before, everything is modules. Module control modules. You think you're just turning a switch on or adjusting a switch or a, a, a pot, they call it? No, you're adjusting, you're giving information to the, to the BCM, body control module, what you want over here, the headlamps. He's giving another command to tell you, okay, you know what? I'm gonna turn the headlamps on, the LEDs on, and I'm going to turn on the body control module, which will activate the relays, which will activate the lights, as you've seen before in other ones. See this? This is the other ones that we did yesterday, I believe. These are the relays, 
These are the relays, as you see over here, body control module over here. See, it controls the relays, it controls the, the bulbs that go on. Another thing, now, something called driver's memory seat module over here. Something of a driver door module over here, over here, memory, memory heated seat switch. Now, so they have this feature now, I guess, in these trailblazers, other cars probably also, where in memory, it holds the seat, the heated seats, and also it heats, it holds the position of your, of your seat. So that when the driver comes for the driver, already comes into the car, everything is already adjusted for him automatically. It knows how to adjust everything, and it goes into memory. See, memory seats. The heat of the, uh, of the seat, probably the position of the seat. I mean, this is like high tech already, to, to be honest with you. But anyway, there's a seat switch over here, which you adjust. Heated seats with the heat. Then it goes to another module, like we just been talking about module after module after module. This is for the driver, of course. So these are the inputs that you're adjusting. He tells this one over here. He puts this in memory. And then it goes to, guess who again? Body control module, the data line. The data line is like a telephone line. It's the best way I can describe it. Where he's talking to this one, this module. This module is talking to this module. It's like a telephone line, back and forth. He's sending him an email. He's sending him back an email. So next time you get in the car, right? You get into the car. If you're driving it, you start it. Body control module probably goes to this driver uh, memory seat module, gets what's in the memory, it adjusts it for you, probably the heat, probably the, um, the, the position of it, like I said, lumbar or some position, some people have, uh, some uh, seats are for that, especially for, for, for the back, um, it adjusts that based on these, based on these controls in memory. If it doesn't do it, when you get in, probably something is wrong with this memory. So these are the features that you have today. So this is what we're working with in nowadays. Everything is electronics and everything is modules, as you can see. So that's that. Now, I wanted to get to a very, very important one. When you have no start in your car, you don't start. I received a comment. They don't, usually a person doesn't have a, a meter. A person doesn't carry a meter. And, is, and when you, when, let's say you first go out to work in the morning in your driveway, you're not going to have a fluke meter or any meter for that. And you've got to go out and open the hood and measure the battery voltage. We have something very important, okay? I want, we have something in your instrument panel. This is an illustration, a diagram of your instrument panel. It's called the instrument panel cluster, your dashboard. That's where all your gauges are. That's where the lights are. That's for um, uh, check engine light. You've seen it, obviously, um, a thousand times. Now, there's something called the volts gauge. And many, many, especially the SUVs have it. Volt gauge is like is a voltmeter. It reads the voltage from the battery. So my response is, or my uh, recommendation is, be familiar with this. You've probably seen this a thousand times, but you didn't pay attention to it. Instead of using a meter to measure the battery, you already have a meter. It's right here. It's your gauge right here. That's why I highlighted this in yellow. Always pay attention to this. So let's say, before we do that, let's go over this. There were inputs on the gauge. These are gauges. You see these? Oil gauge, pressure oil, temperature gauge, coolant temperature, uh, fuel, how much fuel. And these are the LEDs that light, that go on for battery in, in, uh, indication where the first goes on when you first turn on the vehicle, low fuel, and then eventually they go out, right? Um, so anyway, ch uh, change uh, engine oil indicator. We see now it's a new thing now, it comes on. So it's like a boot up and everything comes on and then eventually it goes off to make sure the lights are, and everything is working. Now, here's a, here's a service engine soon. Chevy calls it service engine. So check engine light. Where does this come from, all this information? How does this know how much temperature uh, of the coolant? How does it know how much oil pressure? Guess where this comes from? It comes from the, po the powertrain control module. And I hope you can see this clearly. 
all the information to the, to him comes from <clears throat> the other computer, the PCM. He has sensors, engine oil pressure switch, right here. It gives him the oil gauge. Engine cool temperature sensor, right here. Temperature gauge. What about the fuel? Fuel level, right here. Another sensor input to this. As you can see, fuel. So all these sensors, all these sensors, see? <clears throat> Engine oil level are inputs to him. Now, how do we get him to tell him what's going on from the sensors? You guessed it. If you set a data line, you're 100% right. Also, here's a data line. Uh, control line, uh, control line, right, uh, class two right here, <clears throat> class two, they call it data, class two data, that's the protocol that GM uses to interface, uh, the protocol actually that it uses to interface to speak to the modules. Anyway, not get, not to get too technical, but this is, think of it as a telephone line. How does he communicate to him when he has all this information about the oil and the, and the, and, and the fuel level? He needs somehow to interpret it and to communicate to him. This is the data line, a telephone line, I call it, to make it very simple. Number one, he also tells him this is the engine, uh, check engine light that always comes on as long as it goes off. Whenever you turn it on, everything comes on, like a boot up in a computer, and then everything should go out. Now, the control line of uh, uh, the data line over here. So now we come over here. Actually, this is the the server, the check engine light. This has a 12 volts to it. This probably gives it a low, a low to turn on the LED. But that's not important. Main point is he gets all the information. He gives you the information so you, the driver or the passenger, can see what's going on, what needs to be done as warning lights over here. Now, how does this come to what I started this whole conversation with about five minutes ago? Voltage gauge. Your, your car, you go in your car, it doesn't start. I don't have a meter to measure it, right? Physically, well, now I now this is what I say, you have a volt gauge in here. That volt meter will read whatever the battery is. For this instrument panel, it's called instrument panel cluster, for this to work, it works off the battery also. So here it is, 12, 12 uh, 10 amps over here through a fuse. See it right here? If you can see it, the yeah, I see all this goes into this, into the battery, 12 volts. Okay, it gets 12 volts. Measure There's like a voltmeter, and it measures the voltage across the battery, what's ever coming in. And it gives you this 12 volts. That's why I highlight. That's why I point it to with an arrow. Always pay attention to this now. If you haven't in the past, this is important to you. Again, I have a no start. And what's the first thing that I do? Well, guess what? <clears throat> Your instrument cluster should come on. Even if, let's say the battery voltage is low. Let's just say 12, it was 11 volts. The instrument cluster can, can still come on, uh, illuminate, and still... Make the gauges come on at 11 volts. Probably even 10 and a half volts it could come on. And if this is 10 volts, 10 and a half volts, you're going to read 10 and a half volts over here instead of 12 volts. If the voltage is that, you're going to read 10 and a half volts. Why? Because that's what's coming in. 10 and a half volts is coming in from the battery. And you're going to read it right here. As soon as you see and you're, you turn the key, right, to the accessories, uh, 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 Location, run position, and you see 10 and a half volt, you know, forget it. I'm not going to crank today. That's it. Okay? That's your voltmeter right there. Why is it 10 and a half volts? Maybe there's a parasitic load. Maybe I left the lights on yesterday. Maybe some, uh, uh, and I forgot to turn them off, and it drained the battery. Possible. That's always possible. Could be maybe there's a voltage drop. Maybe there's corrosion on the terminals like I did a video about. Always clean the corrosion the, the, uh, off the, the, the battery terminals and check the resistance of the battery terminals. I made a video about that. I didn't have too many views. But if you can measure the, you can measure the terminals with the resistance, just the, disconnect it from the battery, put the ohm meter like I showed you in that, in that um, video, measure the resistance from the terminal that touches the post to the cable. 
you should measure very low resistance. If you measure, if you measure high resistance or corrosion or rust, you don't make a contact, you have to clean those terminals. That's the best way that I have found to measure those corrosion-free and rust-free cables. Make sure you're making good contact. And again, I have 10 and a half volts. Maybe somebody cranked it yesterday and they cranked it and they, they had a crank and no start and they drained the battery because of a crank and no start, not because of a no start condition and a no crank. Okay, maybe the alternator didn't work and it went to 10 and a half volts also. But if your gauges come on and it goes off, that means you have a bad connection somewhere. Maybe the positive is not making good contact. Maybe the negative to ground is not making good contact. Maybe to, to the engine block. But this, this right here is the most important thing that you can look at. Volts gauge when you have a no start. Always pay attention to it. So if I have 10 and a half volts, I just explained to you what the possible possibilities can be. Okay, he's not at fault. He's just reading what the battery is giving to him. Let's say I'm at 12 volts and I can't start the car. Why is he reading 12 volts? Because that's what the battery is feeding him. And he's telling him it's 12 volts, it's 12 volts. That's what you're going to see. So you say, okay, so it's not that bad yet. Okay, it's not 10 and a half volts. It's not at 11 volts. I do have 12 volts. Fine. So 12 volts, I should be able to start somehow the car, hopefully. Again, 50% charge, 20% charge, depends how much. Remember, 12.6 is completely charged. But anyway, um, anyway, why you cannot start it, then you have to go back to the videos that I had, start a motor relay, a solenoid, computer controls the, the starter relay. Is it a, is it a bad uh, uh, um, uh, voltage drop <clears throat> from there to the starter motor. <clears throat> I, I made videos on this. Go to those videos. But what I'm trying to explain is first step, always you, you turn on the car, you can't start the car. Look at him. If he tells you it's 11 volts, forget it. You're not going nowhere. <clears throat> forget it. Forget it. You got to try. Uh, you got to not try. You got to go and get a booster and, and try to get that car going. If you have 12 volts, then you're working on a something that where, you know what, I, there's no parasitic drain. I didn't leave the, the lights on. Otherwise, I wouldn't have 12 volts. The alternator, well, I don't think so because well, how would I have 12 volts if the alternator was the problem? So anyway, the fact that I have 12 volts means maybe, like I said, starter motor relay, uh, um, uh, the wiring, to the starter motor, maybe I'm losing voltage. The starter motor itself, the computer is not giving the pulse for the starter motor relay. I went, I did so many of those videos. Look at those videos, but always start with him. Start paying attention to him. Please give you give me feedback if you if you absorb this material and you understand what I'm what I'm saying to you. Okay, this should go on in 11 volts or 10 and a half volts. This still should go on. It should be should be illuminated with the gauges. Okay. Remember that. If your power lock doors do not start, right? Your power lock doors don't start even, forget it. You will probably have no connection to the battery whatsoever, or you're very, very low a uh, 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 voltage, okay? You're not, you're not going to start anything. So anyway, please go to my channel, Joe Electronic Schematics for Auto. My other one, Automotive Electronic Schematics for Joseph. I'm trying to get that one more views. But please give me feedback. Hopefully, I'll make a, a video about... The dashboard, and you'll see exactly what I'm referring to when I when you look at this. Some might have the numbers: nine volts, twelve volts, fourteen volts. Okay. Some might have just uh, uh, like um, uh, maybe H or something or lettering. You really can't tell if it's how much the battery is. The best ones are the ones that say the numbers. Like I said, nine volts, ten point five volts, twelve volts, thirteen point five volts depending on increments, but this is the number one thing that will tell you, you don't need a multimeter. This will tell you, I crank it, I start it, this goes on, the lights go on, the gauges go on, I look at it 10 and a half volts, gotta get a boost. That's my number one thing. I'm not going nowhere. I'm not gonna crank an engine with 300 amps, it's not going. Anyway, if you found this informative and if you found this helpful, please tell me, thank you.